It's Friday the 14th of June. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel here from the affiliate office in Columbus, Ohio, where we're attending the Columbus Air Show at the Rickenbacker, the old Rickenbacker Air Base, just south of town here. I'm helping to announce the Stoll Drag Racing that we're doing this weekend. I've been getting a lot of questions about this 737 Dutch Roll event that apparently occurred way back on the 25th of May, but is now making the rounds on uh, mainstream media. And so what the heck happened? What's a Dutch roll? Well, first off, let's start with the Aviation Safety Network. This was uh, November 8825 Quebec, a 737 MAX-8 aircraft. And that's why this story is getting so much traction. This is a, another MAX aircraft in the news manufactured in 2022 with 181 folks on board between Phoenix and Oakland. Um, Southwest Airlines Flight 746, a Boeing 737 MAX 8, experienced a Dutch roll, regained control, and landed safely at the destination. A post-flight inspection revealed damage to the standby PCU, power control unit. That's one of two hydraulic power control units that converts the rudder cable inputs of the, of the pilot's rudder inputs into hydraulic inputs to the rudder. More on that in a minute. Now, from the NTSB, an NTSB statement on the investigation into Southwest Airlines 738 MAX Dutch roll event. The NTSB has opened an investigation into the in-flight oscillation event on, Southwest Air on a Southwest Airlines 737 MAX 8. The event, which was described by the flight crew as a Dutch roll, which occurred on the 25th of May at about 8 uh, a.m. Pacific time at an altitude of 34,000 feet on Southwest Flight 746 from Phoenix to Oakland. A Dutch roll, we'll explain more here in a minute, is a coupled oscillation in the airplane's yaw and roll axis, inherent to the flight dynamics of all conventional airplanes, especially swept wing airplanes. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, nobody was hurt or injured following the event. Southwest Airlines performed maintenance on the airplane and discovered damage to structural components. Now, the other report said they just found a damaged secondary PCU. Southwest Airlines notified the NTSB of the event and damage on June 7th. So the event was on May 25th. NTSB was informed on June 7th. So the NTSB was able to receive the um, vehicle recorder, the data recorder of the aircraft. Data from the recorder will aid the investigation determining the length and severity of the event. But once again, of course, the cockpit voice recorder, which is still, even though this is a brand new airport airplane, does not comply with the recent legislation, uh, has been overwritten. This, this 2022 model aircraft still only had a two-hour capable voice recorder on board the aircraft, um, which is which they now require a recorder of much greater time on, on new aircraft. A preliminary report is expected within 30 days. Okay, so what is Dutch roll? Dutch roll is a fairly benign maneuver. In fact, it's a maneuver we practice in small airplanes, but the maneuver that we practice in small airplanes is not the traditional Dutch roll that I'm about to describe. In small airplanes, we do a rudder coordination exercise where we roll the aircraft back and forth and attempt to keep the nose of the aircraft on a point on the horizon instead of letting it wander around as um, induced lift uh, creates adverse yaw of the wing and yaws the aircraft back and forth. So if you practice keeping that nose on a point, it's a great coordination exercise. But in swept wing airliner type aircraft, they're all susceptible to Dutch roll. Um, so what Dutch roll is, is either you, it's, you either start with a yawing motion. If you start with a yawing motion of the aircraft, as the aircraft is coming towards you, this swept wing over here is now receiving more lift so it's going to start to rise. As this, as this lift increases on this wing, what happens to the induced drag? It also increases. What happens with that induced drag is that pulls that wing back, right? And now it's going to overshoot to this direction and lift this wing. Now this wing is more exposed to the um, slipstream. It's going to produce lift, more induced drag it's going to pull the aircraft back that way. So you've got an out of phase balance between the rolling and the yawing of the aircraft and it creates this Dutch roll effect where the nose can just do this figure eight dance. If you're old enough to have flown a uh, Lockheed C-141, those aircraft uh, Dutch rolled pretty tremendously. Now the, the component that you 
have on board the aircraft to prevent Dutch roll is a thing called a yaw damper. It's not a yaw dampener. I see USA and a few other uh, mainstream media news sources are using artificial intelligence now, and it's just spreading more <laughs> bad information around. It's a yaw damper, not a dampener. We're not putting out a fire. We're damping the oscillations with a yaw damper. And a yaw damper just applies just the right amount of rudder input to prevent the Dutch roll. Now, the rest of my information comes from Chris Brady's 737 technical site, and uh, he's a longtime 737 captain and um, maintenance test pilot on these 737s. He says that with the yaw damper on, if he induces a, a yaw input, he can get that yaw damper to dampen the Dutch roll in about one and a half oscillations, less than two oscillations. But the 737 uh, itself is fairly inherently stable such that you can um, with the yaw damper off you can induce a yawing motion and start the aircraft to doing the Dutch roll but it should stop in about six oscillations with the yaw damper completely off. So how does the rudder work on a 737 and hopefully this is the same for the 737 Max unless there's some new changes that they haven't we haven't been informed of with the design of the 737 Max but traditionally, you have the rudder pedals up front that are connected to torque tubes. Those torque tubes are connected to two rudder cables, just like any other airplane. Those two cables run all the way back to the vertical fin. Those cables turn 90 degrees, go up the vertical fin, and then change the rudder cable action to a rotational action, which drives a concentric cam, which has a couple of push rods on it, which in turn drives the power control unit. The power control unit, there's two of them. There's a main power control unit and a second or backup power control unit. That power control unit is what ports hydraulic pressure to the rudder. Now this hydraulic uh, system has a lot of redundancy uh, on the 737. There's an A system and a B system and a standby system, so three separate hydraulic systems. And any of those high, one of those three hydraulic systems can power the PCU and can power the rudder. There's no manual reversion of the rudder such that you could have a straight cable driving the rudder. However, there is the secondary PCU, which Chris Brady describes as a uh, manual reversion. Anytime that the aircraft gets into a condition where it needs to use the backup or secondary PCU. That's what he calls manual reversion. And the interesting thing with this particular incident is that the damage was found on the backup PCU. Now as soon as we start talking about the rudder PCU and 737s, those of you that have been around a long enough time remember that we lost two 737s back in the early 90s, a US Airways and a United Airlines one, and there was a couple other incidents where they finally discovered or found after three years of investigation that there was a fundamental flaw in the power control unit of those early 737 designs and those power control units have been completely redesigned to prevent a rudder hard over uh, sort of experience like those two aircraft apparently experienced and they were a total hull loss. Now remember that I said the device that can prevent uh, Dutch roll is the yaw damper and the yaw damper on the 737 is usually two computers which will put just en enough rudder input to prevent the Dutch roll if there's any yawing or rolling motion which can be initiated by turbulence. And here on Chris's uh, website he explains how the rudder itself using the main PCU has upwards of like 26 degrees plus or minus of control authority. The rudder trim only has about 16 degrees of rudder authority and the yaw damper itself only has about three degrees of rudder authority but that's all it takes to dampen Dutch roll. Chris Brady on his 737 technical site goes into great detail explaining the entire history of the design of the PCU and the entire rudder assembly on the 737 and here's a picture of the concentric rods driving the PCU or the power control unit which in turn provides hydraulic pressure inputs to the rudder. 
Part of the major redesign of the rudder controls following the 1996 accidents was the addition of a force fight monitor, which monitors the A and B system hydraulic pressure. And if there's a big difference between hydraulic pressures, if they're fighting each other, it will automatically switch over to the secondary PCU and turn on the standby hydraulic pressure and take the A and B hydraulics completely out of the system if I'm understanding this correctly and instead drive the rudder using standby hydraulic pressure and the secondary PCU. So 737 MAX guys get into your uh, volume 2 their systems book and find out is there any major changes in the design in the 737 MAX rudder system, um, PCUs, secondary PCU and yaw, or yaw damping system is there any or is there something in there that we're beginning to just now understand about the 737 rudder that's some something different than the previous iterations of the 737 we're not crawling down another MCAS kind of hole with this with this yaw damper problem this Dutch roll problem with this aircraft are we I hope not but Boeing's kind of lost our trust out there, and so we've got to dig deep into this and find out what happened to that secondary PCU. What was the extent of the damage to that aircraft? A lot of questions need to get answered. Hopefully the NTSB will have some answers for us in about 30 days to what happened to this aircraft. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Back to the air show. See you here.